Hello and welcome everyone. This is Benam from Banks and Markets and in this video I am going to talk about the computation aspect of VAR methods. So basically I will be capturing variance covariance approach, historical simulation approach and Monte Carlo simulation approach including the VR extension given by conditional VR also known as CVAR or expected shortfall. So let us think of a scenario first which is you read some articles such as this and you found you were interested that to, to find out how good is it to invest in the stocks of banks okay so that kind of encouraged you to make investment in banks because you made use of such published articles and this is something that's published in seeking alpha uh, recently September 2020 but then you just wanted to find out on the risk side first because in the past you had read some news such as this in which they are saying some banks fail in their stress test when conducted by central banks so one of the banks that failed the stress tests in the past is royal bank of scotland so this again motivated you to find out what it says in the bank of england report and you can see uh, it talks about a number of banks in this report here which is issued by Bank of England back in 2016 and on page number 16 uh, you can see the page 16 you can see the name of the banks here um, so the bank that didn't pass the test is Royal Bank of Scotland but there are other banks here included in the discussion so this motivated you to uh, make investment in the banks uh, other than the Royal Bank of Scotland such as you wanted to invest in Barclays, HSBC, Lloyds, Nationwide and so on further you also read some regulatory documents the document published by um, banks for international settlements such as this one and on page 81 what you saw is the various norms and this document is saying in the case of the VAR you need to calibrate at 99th percentile confidence interval the document also talks about expected shortfall uh, that is again uh, a requirement to be uh, included in the VAR tests so with all these in mind what we can do now uh, is compute the VAR so you can see here on page 89 of this document it talks about expected shortfall to be calculated at 97 Point five percentile one tailed confidence level so these files and this video everything including the computation will be available inside the banks and market just click finance and you will get there uh, first what I will do I will show you what will be the computed VR uh, using Bloomberg because it's easy and quick in Bloomberg and uh, uh, in my next video I will also show you how the results that is derived by Bloomberg can be computed manually using the data in Excel spreadsheet so let's start so first thing first what we want to do is see what will be the we are given loss using the three different methods so first we need to form a portfolio of the banks and one way to find out the 
banks and then form the portfolio is through equity screening for which when you are in Bloomberg you can type in EQS and this will take you to the page which allows you to filter and find out the type of companies that you are interested in so over here in this screen as you can see the date is as of today 2020 what you can do is go back let's say five years ago such as 2015 so i went i'm back in 2015 now i hit enter so you can see the date has been changed to 2015 now I've gone five years back, but if you see the norms, the prescription given by banks for international settlement, the period will be something like 12 months in their latest uh, up-to-date document. But this is just an example and we want to see uh, using more data. So I've just, uh, as an example, went all the way back to 2015. Then, as I said, uh we have this assumption that we are interested in investing within banking sector and banks coming from the uk so here therefore you can ask bloomberg to help you find out the listed companies in london exchange so for that you can simply type in london and then it will filter from the large number of available security which here is 83,000 to the screened just for those in London which here is 2,656 so after this what you need to do is find out those in banking sector so you can just type in banking and then take this and therefore you will see the number drops down significantly 16 banks uh, of course the way i have been screening you can do so by clicking sector and inside sector you can find banking and you can do that that way but now there are 16 banks but when you saw the report uh, produced by uh, the bank of england here are few banks fewer than 16 which have successfully passed the stress testing so therefore you just want to take those banks like barclays hsbc lowers Na nationwide uh, and uh, let's say standard chartered okay uh, but not royal bank of scotland um, because you found the bank didn't complete the stress test. So uh, we can also take a satender, but let's limit it to five banks. And when you take Barclays, especially Lloyds, Nationwide, Standard Chartered, um, that will do the job um, uh, as an example. It's just an example. So in order to find those banks, uh, given they are also some of the richest bank in the country, what you can do is you can type in total assets, and then click total assets and as you are just interested to find out the top five banks in terms of total assets you can go and click rank here so that is the place to click rank and once you click rank this is sequential which is fine now top five is what you need to do so top Five because you just want five banks in your portfolio so I pressed five and now I hit enter so the screened portfolio now you will see limits to just the five banks and if you click and see results you will see the banks that uh, we saw in the Bank of England report will be there but not in the Royal Bank of Scotland. And I have also omitted using this criteria, the Satender Bank. So those five banks are here. Now you want to form a portfolio of these five banks um, in such a way that you made investment five years ago in 2015. And it's easy in 
Bloomberg, what you need to do is go to Axons and first verify that EQS report is checked in. So if this is confirmed, then the next step is to go to export and create the portfolio consisting of these five banks from 2015. So you click portfolio now. So then you need to give a name such as uh, we can give a name, let's say five banks uh, UK. Okay. And you can change the weight to fixed weight. And this basically means the uh, weights of investment will remain fixed throughout the period. Um, and now you simply select this. This will then means the portfolio will then will will then be selected, and the simulation of investment will be undertaken by Bloomberg. So that's what this means. So you can close it. There are only five banks, so it will not take long for Bloomberg to simulate. So what you can do now is you can go to PRTU, which is Portfolio Administration, and find out from there the portfolio that you have just formed. So you can see we gave the name Five Banks UK and with, therefore this is the portfolio of our interest. So you click here and then you will be able to see that the Bloomberg has automatically assigned 20% weight to each bank, therefore 100% for five banks. You can also verify here when the portfolio weights were defined. We said to define it in 2015 and that's what it has done if you click here the re the, the the portfolio rebalancing has taken just once that was back in 2015 and uh, that's what you can see the last update which is now this basically means this is as we expected so you can cancel this now you have seen this the next thing that you can do is uh, is provide the information related to the investment amount. Here it is 100 million. And let us uh, assume that you only invested 1 million. So you can change this to three, four, five, six zeros. So back in 2015, the default value of 100 million given by Bloomberg has been replaced by just 1 million and you can now save it. So you see the portfolio value at the initiation is kept at 1 million. Now what you need to do now is just see the VAR. It's pretty simple which for which what you need to do is go to this button analyze so click analyze there are so many tabs there do not worry just go on to VAR tab so from analyze which takes you to this portfolio and risk analytics you just need to click VAR and then from VAR I want you to click VAR comparison and this way you will be able to see VR computed by Bloomberg for all three methods, including the conditional VR computed value at risk. And given we had scaled the data daily, this result, such as when you click for parametric VR, which basically means variance covariance approach given VR the VR for the next one day or for the next 24 hours the amount that uh, the maximum amount at 95 percent or five percent cut off uh, um, confidence interval will be 24,156 as you will expect, the VAR24156 is at the VAR point 
at 95% confidence interval, but the conditional VR basically represents the average of the losses from the cutoff point of VAR towards the end. So therefore, this is going to be always higher than the VAR measures. So you, you are able to see how quickly and efficiently you can make use of Bloomberg in order to find out the VR and you have VR using Monte Carlo simulation you have VR using VCB, which is also known as parametric VR. And finally, you also have VR using historical simulation method. There are three variants. It is just to say that this one takes the one year length of data, the second one, uh, two year period, and the third one is three year period data is included and you can see the differences in computed VR. Of course, the VR has also been calculated for 97.5% and 99%. And you can see that the ordinary measure of VR such as this at 99% um, here, let's say 34164 is somehow not very far away from conditional VR, which is this. So this again illustrates the fact that the conditional VR will be higher than the other VR measures. And uh, there are similarities between the conditional VR and the 99% given VR measures. Okay, so that's it from my side. Now you may be interested to see how this VR can be computed yourself without the help of Bloomberg. And that's something um, that will be available in my other videos. And again, all the data and the files available inside the uh, banks and markets.com. So, thank you very much for listening to me and thank you very much for your time. And I need to stop my recording, and that's what I will do next. Stop.